Pearson Interactive Labs for Microbiology offer a wet lab virtual simulation that can be used as a lab replacement, a lab refresher, and for review after completion. Each lab starts off with a real-world example that helps engage students with scenarios they can relate to. In this lab, students will learn about gram staining and its purpose to support a full diagnosis and antimicrobial drug treatment for Colin, who experiences a zip line accident. After the story, the students will enter the lab dashboard, where they will work in sequence through the four sections of the lab, including the introduction, lab experiment, post-lab analysis, and finally the troubleshooting section. I would also like to point out the Need a Refresher section available in the left-hand navigation. Students can access this area at any time from the lab dashboard to review topics required to complete the lab experiment. Students will start with the introduction. Its purpose is to prepare them for the lab experiment. In the gram stain, the introduction provides students with an understanding of the difference between gram-positive and gram-negative cell walls, details of gram stain steps, and visualizations of cells and cell walls at each step. In this first screen, students will revisit lecture and background material to set them up for success in the lab. Students are assessed with questions and gain directed and guided feedback along the way. In the pre-lab, students gain exposure to hand washing requirements, personal protective equipment, lab bench sanitation, a full tour of what's available on their lab bench. Each lab emphasizes critical thinking skills and lab skills, along with techniques used in the physical lab setting. In the gram stain lab, students are asked to perform a gram stain on the pathogen from Colin's foot. To do this, we will prepare smears from broth cultures. As you can see here in our lab notebook on the left, our steps are clearly laid out for us to follow. First, we're asked to light the Bunsen burner. Next, label the glass slide. Resuspend culture from patient one. And sterilize the inoculating loop and allowing it to cool. We obtain the inoculum from patient one's culture, which includes uncapping the tube, flaming the tube lip, and obtaining a loopful of culture. We are then asked to answer a question. You just received a loop full of inoculum. What should you do next? We'll receive feedback based on our answer to assist in our learning journey. In this case, we should flame the tube lip. We're now asked to make the smear from patient one culture. We add culture to the slide. allow to air dry, then he'd fix the smears. We would next continue through the steps to perform the gram stain. In the interest of time, we'll skip that here. Once the lab experiment is complete, we'll return to the dashboard and work through the post-lab analysis. Students will continue to receive information about viable treatment options for Colin, assisting them in understanding suitable drug treatment based on the pathogen. Now we'll return to the dashboard to show the final stage of the lab, troubleshooting. In the troubleshooting section, students will learn how to handle problems that can cause the gram stain to produce anomalous or misleading results. On the initial screen of the troubleshooting section, students will look at the scenarios of over and under decolorizing, the use of a culture that's more than 24 hours old, and bacteria that do not respond to gram staining in a typical way.
Students are asked to categorize slides based on what they see. As you can see, students are asked to answer questions in varying formats in order to expose them to material in a way that simulates what they might see in the wet lab. Students will continue through the section in order to complete the entire lab and will conclude at the dashboard. And that is Pearson Interactive Labs for Microbiology.